An API proxy provides an interface to developers for accessing backend services. It can help you customize the way an application consumes backend services and decouples the front end from implementation details of the backend. In this overview, we will help you understand what an API proxy is and the benefits of using one to interact with services. First, let's define some key terms that we'll be using. API stands for Application Programming Interface, which is an interface that allows different programs to interact with each other. In this context, we mainly mean web APIs, which are either externally facing or used to communicate internally between servers. Backend services, which we may refer to interchangeably as backend or just services, these are the servers, APIs, or databases that make up the parts of your architecture that your applications rely on. Consumers, the applications that interact with your backend, used interchangeably with the term front-ends in this tutorial. Consumers can include mobile, web, or desktop applications, as well as anyone or anything making API calls to your services. Shim. A shim is a layer of code which helps provide compatibility between different interfaces or APIs. A shim helps two different programs work together without having to directly change either of the programs. So what is an API proxy? An API proxy is an intermediary program that sits between consumer applications and the actual backend services that handle the requests. The API proxy can be a small shim that translates requests or a more complex application. A shim might translate requests the consumer sends into the format of the backend services accept. A more complex API proxy might also handle data transformations, security, routing, traffic shaping, or more. An API proxy decouples consumers from the API exposed by a backend service, and vice versa. Only the API proxy needs to be aware of what is expected by both the consumer and the service. Because the consumer and backend service don't communicate directly, the consumer doesn't need to adapt to the implementation of the underlying service, and the service doesn't need to adapt to the consumer. Let's take a look at an example of an API proxy. Imagine you have a modern web application that needs to get information from a legacy backend service that communicates in XML. Instead of having the web app send XML requests, it can send a more typical request to an API proxy. In this scenario, the client sends its request, maybe with parameters as query strings or JSON body, to the API proxy. The API proxy can translate the request into the XML format the service is expecting and then send the request. The service responds back to the API proxy in XML format. The API proxy then translates the XML payload into a JSON payload for the client, and then sends the response to the client. This is just one example of what an API proxy can do. The client might actually need the data that resides across multiple different services, which the API proxy can contact before sending its response back to the client. This way, the client doesn't need to know about all the different services or make all those API calls. It just needs to know about the single API call it makes to the API proxy. In both these examples, the API proxy is acting as an intermediary, helping the consumer get the data it needs without having to talk directly to each service. Let's talk about some of the benefits of using an API proxy. The core benefit is that API proxies create an abstraction between backend services and consumers by sitting in between them. That means consumers and services don't have to directly be aware of each other or interact with each other. How that interaction actually plays out is left up to the API proxy. This abstraction lets you create custom interfaces for consumers to the backend. Like in the example of a web app talking to the backend that speaks XML, the API proxy exposes a custom interface for the web application to communicate with the XML API. This can allow new consumers to talk to existing backend services without having to rewrite the backend service to accommodate the communication needs of the consumer. This can be especially useful when working with a service you either don't control or don't want to modify. Custom interfaces also give you the opportunity to add features like data transformation, caching, or additional security for communicating with an existing service. Again, the API proxy can implement these without having to modify the original service. Having separation between a backend service and consumers can give you the opportunity to expose a stable interface for the service to consumers. For example, if you're in the process of completely rewriting a backend services API, normally you'd have to make the equivalent changes to how consumers are accessing their data. But with an API proxy, you might only have to make those changes at the proxy level, fixing how the proxy communicates with the backend. This can allow your front end or other consumers to continue to use the same stable API interface exposed by the API proxy, even though the backend services API has changed. To recap, an API proxy is an application that acts as a shim between consumers and backend services. It can be small or complex. API proxies help decouple consumers and services so they don't have to communicate directly 
or know each other's implementation details. You can use an API proxy to expose custom interfaces to services which can transform data, combine multiple API calls into a single API call, expose a stable interface even as services implementations change, and also layer in additional features such as caching, extra security, and others.